welcome back students to my new lecture on the topic hemicordata we will discuss on the general characteristics of the phylum hemicordata what are the relationship of hemicordata with uh, non chordates and uh, chordates so first uh, we will uh, discuss on the characteristic features of the hemicordata hemicordates are more or less worm like structure more or less worm like structure they live in the temporary and permanent uh, tubes in the bottom mud or among rocks of or masses of plant material the hemicordates are large solitary worms uh, belongs to class entrepanista or it may be hydrate like colonies of tiny zooids that's a class uh, pterobranchia that's inhabiting in the sea and pterobranch colonies inhabit a branching tubular network and that is secreted uh, from glands in the oral seals of the zooids what is oral seal oral seal is a glandular ciliated disc on which the zooid glide over the inner surface of the tube and so many examples under uh, hemicordata what are the examples uh, balanoglossus sacoglossus and atubaria the name balanoglossus is coming from the greek word balanos mean acorn that's mean fruit of oak that is referred to the proboscis that uh, projecting that projecting from collar that's looking like an acorn nut hence the common name acorn worm and the glossus glossus mean tongue that refers to the shape of the proboscis that's refers to the that's refers to the shape of the proboscis collar and genital wings also presents this is the collar regions and these are the genital uh, wings regions that close resembles with ox tongue hence the common name tongue worm and it is a figure of the balanoglossus gigas that may reach up to the length of 2.5 meter and what are the features of the hemicordata body vermiform without appendages and exoskeletal that's mean no cuticle body is unequally divided into three region it's a short region that is a proboscis also known as prostom protostomes and almost equal another portion that region is collar region that is known as mesosome and elongated trunk region that is known as metasome the trunk region that is provided with many rounded pharyngeal gill opening and prominent genital wings that are located anterior end of the trunk region now the skin is naked that's a line with ciliated epidermis and that contains numerous gland cells reticular gland cells neurosecretory cells granular cells etc etc numerous gland cells are present and also neurosensory cells present in the epidermis and a definite dermis is absent below the epidermis there is a nervous layer that forms a network and that is close contact with the epidermis cell and below the nerve plexus there is a prominent basement membrane and that is followed by muscles the muscle is very poorly developed now cilium the cilium is entrocilous in origin initially spacious and lined by peritoneum and in adult the cilium is greatly reduced by connective tissue and muscle fibers that derive from cilomic epithelium the cilium is divided into three portion proboscis cilium that is a proboscis cilium you see here that is known as a protocil and that is reduced and then collar cilium the collar cilium is known as mesocil and that has two narrow lateral cavity these are the two narrow lateral cavities and these cavities are partitioned by incomplete mid dorsal and mid ventral mesenteries the proboscis and collar cilium this is the proboscis cilium and this is the collar cilium that open through exterior by pores whereas the trunk cilium that is known as metacil that also has two cavity that are the cavity but without pores two cavities are separated by an incompleted dorsal and completed ventral mesentery 
no definite endoskeleton system, but there is four steep like structures of supportive nature. Organ presence that are the buccal diverticulum, proboscis skeleton, branchial skeleton, and pygopod. The buccal diverticulum from the roof of the buccal cavity, a hollow preoral outgrowth composed of small vacuolated cell. That is interesting. Small vacuolated cell extend forward through the proboscis stalk into the proboscis cilum. Initially, they considered as notochord. Initially, they considered as notochord, but later studies suggest. That it is higher homologous, higher homologous, not analogous with the notochord cordates of cordates. And then uh, proboscis skeleton, that is a y separate structure that is formed by thickening of basement membrane. And it consists of broad, flat, almost rectangular median plate. And this is a, another portion, it's a ventral field region. And also, uh, contains posteriorly to diverging horns. These are the diverging horns. And then bankal skeleton, the bankal skeleton are also usepet structure. You see here, usepet structure. The wall of the usepet gill clefts are supported by skeletal rods. It may be primary and the secondary gill rods are, are present. And then another structure, Longitudinal rod-like structure. This is a longitudinal rod-like structure that located on the post-hepatic region of the trunk and mid ventrally between the intestine and the body wall. And then digestive system. The digestive system, uh, that's a mouth. You see here, this is a mouth region. Then mouth leads into state elementary canal that is divided into buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, and intestine. The pharynx is spacious and that uh, contains a uh, respiratory chamber that is a, known as a dorsal branchial parts and another digestive part that is uh, ventral uh, food channels. And the branchial part that is supported with so many uh, gill slits. You see here, these are the gill slits. And respiratory apparatus uh, comprises of branchial portion of the pharynx that's bearing gill slits and a branchial sac which open uh, through the gill pores and behind the last gill clip, there is a short esophagus that is followed by elongated intestine. And the intestine then divided into two parts, anterior hepatic region and posterior intestine. And the hepatic regions of the intestine are highly vascular, are highly vascular. And the dorsal wall forms numerous circulation that is known as hepatic cica. Now, uh, the gill slits, that is a true quadrate characters. The gill slits, that is a true quadrate characters and it is a typical quadrate features. Now, they are numerous in number and who increase according to the age. They're assumed to be gas exchange organ. The gill slits are curved and uh, u separate structure, you see here, the u separate structure. And the pharyngeal wall between the two limbs of the gill clave, that is a hollow secondary gill bar that is known as tongue bar. You see here, these are the hollow part. That is a tongue bar or gill bar. The pharyngeal wall forms the primary gill bar and the tongue bars and the septa are supported internally by chitinous skeleton that is forming the m sepid rods. These are the m sepid rods, see here. Now each gill clave leads into a bag-like structure that like structure that is known as a gill pouch and that opens to the exterior by a small pore. Now, cilia lining the gill slates beats in coordinate fashion so that the water is drawn in at the mouth and discharged through the slits. This flow of the water is believed to serve for gas exchange and the meaning of the name Antriopanista. The animals essentially breathe through a portions of their gut Little is known about the nature of the excretion, however, structure that is known as a uh, glomerular structures, that is also known as a proboscis gland, that is probably excretory in nature and removes excretory substances from the blood. Peritoneal cells of the proboscis cilum that are also excretory in nature. The circulatory system is well developed and it is a mixture of open and closed type of the hemal system. There are two main uh, longitudinal vessels. Uh, you see here, this is a uh, dorsal uh, vessels and you see here, this is a ventral vessels. The walls of the dorsal and the ventral vessels are made up of endothelial cells 
and are contractile in nature. The dorsal vessels, you see here, this is the dorsal vessels that surround anteriorly and collect blood from the alimentary canal and the body wall near the proboscis. The dorsal vessels joins a small non-contractile space that is known as central sinus or heart. You see here, this is a heart. Just above the heart, there is a heart vesicles or pericardium whose lower wall is contractile and possesses a flow of blood from the central sinuses. The blood from the central sinuses passes first into a plexus and that is known as glomerulus. And from there, blood goes to small peribuccal vessels, which later forms ventral vessels. This is a ventral vessels. Just reverse to the other coordinates. The nervous system is very primitive, mostly in the form of the sub-epidermal nerve plexus, presence of two main nerve cords, one mid-ventral and one mid-dorsals, two main nerve cords, one mid-ventral and one mid-dorsals, which run along the entire length. The ventral nerve cord terminates into the collar region, but the dorsal cord continues to anterior portion of the body. And the structure of the collar cord is interesting because it is situated in the mesocils and the hollow tube collar cord possesses giant nerve cells which form conductive pathways. Uh, cells organs are very poorly developed. Few uh, non-sensory cells uh, that form the photoreceptors and a pre-oral ciliary organ at the ventral sites of the proboscis. That is uh, probably a uh, chemistry shifted in nature. The reproductive system, uh, basically they are, as you know, that's a gonochoristic phenomena. Sexes are separate, but dimorphism is conspicuous. Gonads are developed from the silomic wall, but without any connection with that silum at the adult. The gonophores are located at the lateral side of the gill pore. Gonads are sac-like bodies occurring in several longitudinal rows in the genital wings on either side of the alimentary canal. The fertilization is external in sea water. Eggs are relatively large and yolky. However, the cleavage is holoblastic. The cleavage is holoblastic. That is resembles to vertebrate cordex. Eggs undergo through ciliated free swimming larva stage, that is a tonaria larva. And that is uh, similar to the auricularia larva of the echinoderms, and a gradual metamorphosis occurs in the cocoon. Now, what are the affinities of the hemicordata? The position of hemicordata in animal kingdom remains controversial. Initially, it was thought to be an analida, but later it was included the phylum parata. Still, later workers gave an independent phylum of the status of hemicorata, so the hemicorata known as phylum hemicorata. Before deducing the systematic positions, it would be considered to discuss the affinities of hemicorata to other related groups of animals. However, it should be kept in mind that it is deuterostome metazoa that so radial indeterminate cleavage and anas originate from blastopod. So the position of hemicarata is of special importance for zoologists for many years. Hemicarata bear similar features with various groups of animals and that's so uh, affinities with Annelida. Uh, Dohan 1875 and Minot 1897 has attempted Annelida affinities of hemicarata based on the Similarities, barbic from body and burrowing habit, similar casting, similar flow of blood through the vessels, dorsal blood vessels carries blood forward and ventral vessels carries blood backward. And now the apparent similarities between trochophore and ternaria larva, both are ciliated and free swimming. So Semper 1876 stated that hemicordata exhibit close resemblance with annelids and they included, Semper 1876 included it as a modified annelid. Now, so many differences. Metamerically segmented body, annelida, not in hemicordata, nap cord, that is a dorsal in hemicordata, whereas annelida, it is a ventral, stomachord, that is present in hemicordata, but no existence of the stomachord in annelida, gill slits present in hemicordata, absent in annelida, parapodium ceta, well developed in annelida, and that is a characteristic feature, key characteristic features of the annelida, whereas in case of the hemicordata, it is absent. So basic differences are so great that there cannot be any phylogenetic relationship between hemicordata and annelida. And fundamentally, hemicordates are deuterostomes, but, but annelida are the autostomes. So they are not under the category of the annelida. Now, the relationship of the hemicordata with foronids basically on the basis of the larval similarity, a locophorate silomic group 
that was advocated by A.T. Masterman, 1897, based on the larval similarities between actinotroch larva of Foronida and Ternaria larva of the Hemicorata. But the caudate features of the Hemicorata, like pharyngeal gill slits, are absent in the Foronida. However, such affinity are superficial and without any phylogenetic relationship. Then, affinities with hemi, echinodermata. On the, on the basis of adult anatomy, no one could suspect any relationship between the echinodermata and hemicorata. But embryological and larval similarities are very convenient. The fact is that for several years after its discovery, the ternaria larva was considered as a larva of echinodermata. And what are the similarities? The cleavage and gastrular formation follow the same pattern in both. In both forms, the blast code becomes larval anus. The greatest and more convenience is the method of selum formation in both the selum is enterocilus in origin. The hard vesicle is related to medriporic vesicles of echinoderm larva. Among the larva, a ciliated band is identical and follows the same course in the ternaria and in auricularia. In both larval forms, the structure of elementary canal is similar, but so many differences. Symmetry hemicordat are bilateral symmetry, whereas the echinoderm, it is a pentaradial symmetry. Stomochord present in hemicordata, but in echinodermata not uh, exists. Gill slits present in hemicordata, whereas echinodermata absent. So water vascular system, that is a characteristic feature of the echinodermata, but it is absent in the hemicordata. So, 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 and more, more differences, I spot that are absent uh, in the auricularia and bipinaria larva of the echinoderms and apical plates and telotroch are absence in the bipinaria larva. Photoshield that is a paired in echinoderms, but it is unpaired in hemicorders. These are the other differences also. So, so now it is uh, not reasonable to support that many resemblances between hemicorata and echinodermata can be accidental or result of convergent adaptation. They appear no escape from the conclusion that hemicorders and echinoderms stem from a common ancestor as per Hyman 1959. Now, uh, on, the, on the view of Vatisan and Gaston 1886 suggested by paleontological and morphological similarities that echinoderms are closely related to hemicorders and opine that hemicorders probably originated from the early echinoderms. The metamorphosis of echinoderms indicates that they have deviated greatly from the ancestral types. In other words, the common ancestral stock gave up the echinodermata as a blind branch, then continued along its main line of evolution to hemicorders and cordates. We can consider hemicorata and echinodermata as two distinct and separate groups. Now, what are the affinities with quadrata? Inclusion of Dranoglossus under phylum quadrata is not universally accepted. But according to Batishon, 1885, hemicorata is a subphylum within the phylum quadrata. The arrangement still exists in some textbook in case of uh, Parker and Hustle, 1964, and Young uh, Lives of Hattibets, 1981. They included uh, hemicorata under the category of the quadrata. And what are the resemblance? There's a the presence of a pharyngeal gill slit similar in details with the lower groups of quadrates and a short dorsal collar cord, maybe compared with the dorsal hollow nap cord of the quadrates. So, so uh, the buccal diverticula or the stomachord of the hemicorata was regarded as the equivalent to the notochord. So uh, since the time of the addition, so they mention that the uh, phylum quadrates that uh, contain hemicorata. But, but you know, the notochord is made up of large number of the vacuolated cells, you know. And stomochord is homologous to the notochord, but so many differences. What are the differences? Buccal diverticula is generally made up of ordinary epithelial cells, while the notochord is made up of large number of the vacuolated cells. The buccal diverticula is hollow structure and probably endodermal in origin, but notochord is formed from the mesodermal in origin. The buccal diverticulum lies ventral to the dorsal uh, blood vessels, whereas the cardiac, the notochord, lies dorsal to dorsal blood vessels. And the buccal diverticula has no enclosing seat as found around the notochord. So therefore, the homology between the stomochord and notochord is denied, and the has been removed from the phylum collata. Now, as per Young 
1881, they placed Hemi Corata as a subphylum of phylum Corata. And he believed that the buccal diverticulum, that is the stomachord, is derived from the notochord as a typical notochorded structure, which would be disadvantageous for the animal whose main movement is lengthening and shortening for burrow. So he prefers to use the term stomochorata to avoid any confusion with notochords. And other differences between the hemicorata and corata, such as the circuitary and nervous systems of hemicorata are like those of invertebrates. There are no close anal tail in hemicorates. Corates are metamedically segmented animals, reflected clearly by the muscular, nervous, circuitary, and excretory system. Whereas in hemicorates, these systems are totally absent and there are any traces of the segmentation. Now, the endostyle of the pharynx found in lower groups of cordates is absent in hemicordata. And in some books, still now, uh, it is under the uh, uh, phylum uh, cordata, and basically, urocordata, cephalocordata, and the hemicordata, they are known as the protocordates. Now, what are the affinities uh, with urocordata? And as for similarities, similarities in between the pharynx and the branchial apparatus of both, development of the central part of the nervous system is quite similar in both. In both filter feeding is practiced, but so many uh, dissimilarities. Tornaria and acidian tetpole larva are not similar. Test is absent, that is the characteristic features of the urocordata, and then that is absent in the hemicordates. The notochord in urocordate tetpole in the tail of larva, while in hemicordates, the stomachord present in the proboscis. So the relationship becomes difficult to establish because the cordate nature of hemicordates itself is questionable. Now the resemblance are due to the fact that the hemicordates are very remotely connected with the center stalk from which eurocordates have descended. Now what are the affinities with the cephalocordata? Similarities in the structure and the function of the branchial apparatus. Filter feeding occurs in both cases. Arrangement of silomic sacs are similar. Presence of numerous gunars. Now presence of unsegmented muscles, fibers in baranoglossus and the similarities in the developmental history stand as barrier to establish any close relationship between the, them. Now a question. Now what is the systematic positions of the banner process in the animal kingdom? Early authors and zoologists such as Batish in 1885 considered hemicordata under the phylum cordata. However, this relationship cannot justify it on the basis of affinities between hemicordata and cordata. The typical caudate characters is pharyngeal gill slits and short length of tubular napcord. For this reason, Barrington and Jefferies 1975 included hemicordates under protocordates along with eurocordates and cephalocordates. Now, few similarities are far outweighed by important differences. Main among these is the absence in caudate's body organization having Peculiar division of the body and silam, that is the proboscis, collar, and trunk, that is not found in the corridor. And single layer of the ciliated epidermis, hepatic sica, dorsal heart, open neurosy, colorless blood, numerous gonads, that's different from the corridors. After discussing affinities of hemicorata with various groups, it seems certain that hemicorata is definitely an invertebrate group. And the fact is cancelled, they are included in the phylum corridor. Further, they are closer to the echinoderms than comparison to the cordates as per Hyman 1959 and recent molecular analysis such as 18S RRNA analysis of the anthroponists suggest that they are closer to echinoderms in comparison to cordates. So both the adult structure are so strikingly different that it is not possible to include hemicordata with echinoderma. A base solution of the problem is to regard them as an independent phylum of invertebrates. That means phylum hemicordata itself. Starting from a common ancestral line of the evolution, hemicordates support in one hand with echinoderms and on the other hand with cordates. So this view is also supported by all modern authors such as Marson and Williams, 1972, and also Barnes. 1987. These are the reference books in Vertebrate Geology, McLeish and Saram, Modern Textbooks of Geology, Kotpal, a textbook of Geology, Parker and Herschel, in Vertebrate Geology, uh, Edward D. Rupert and Robert D. Barnes. Thank you, everyone.